and welcome back to Reinforce the Horse. Today we're doing a bit of a life update and talking about what's been going on and oh there's a lot to cover today so we're just gonna jump right in and uh well dad how are you doing this fine evening? I'm doing absolutely great. Great me too. So where do we start? Maybe with the title of this episode called Asta La Vista Leukemia. And actually, Dad, how about you start and tell us a little bit about that idea, where it came from, and what exactly it is? Yeah. Before I get there, I just want to like say a great like and strong thank you to all of the listeners and all of the guests that we've had on since we started and also the number of guests that have been on recently and those who are scheduled to be coming on the show soon. So it just seems like within the past few weeks, we've had just an uptick in activity, positive activity here on the podcast. And just, I know you and I are both really excited about that. And also to the listeners, because we do see you, uh, at least from a analytics perspective, and um, we would love to hear from you. So, you know, feel free to catch us on Facebook or Instagram, or even send us an email at podcast at reinforcethehorse.com. We'd love to hear from you if you're a listener and any feedback good, bad, ugly, otherwise. So just thank you for being here. Yeah, I'll piggyback on that and again say thank you so much. You you listeners and guests, everyone, you're what makes this go round. You're what makes this happen for us. So a huge thank you to everyone who's helped us make this dream a reality. For sure. So the topic of Asa La Vista Leukemia... Uh, this was another one of Alyssa and my creation as we found ourselves walking around and being with and about the horses and just goofing off as we normally do in our day-to-day lives with each other. And, um, as many of you know, I was diagnosed with leukemia back in 2017. And since then, I've been on this like journey of really remarkable healing. And not just from a perspective of eradicating the disease from my body, but also just awakening at the soul level. And clearing a lot of negativity and past trauma and difficulty that I had carried around in my life for a very, very long time, arguably that I carried around from past lives. And so the idea for this book, Asla Visa Leukemia, it's a children's book and Really, it just came about, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Alyssa, but I was just kind of sitting there and maybe, I don't know, at the time, I don't even think we were doing meditation. Maybe we were, but uh, I was just like pretending to um, get in touch with my blood cells and... I was like, I'm imagining them exiting my body. And yeah. I said, like, also la vista leukemia. Wow. That actually feels like forever ago. Before you mentioned that, I honestly forgot how the idea came to be. But yeah, that sounds, that's coming back to me, correct? So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, we were just sitting there and and then that goofiness kind of played through and I don't know how much time went by, maybe a year, maybe months, I don't know. But this story developed 
And we both kind of had the idea and molded it and crafted this idea of a children's story. And I do think originally it was a it was a joke. Like we were joking around, you know, Asta la vista leukemia. It'd be so cool to, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe read this to kids or whatever. This is before the characters were developed. And uh, it it became a thing that we would just talk about and explore in our mind's eye. And uh, at the time, I was a very, like, very, very, very new artist. I still consider myself a new artist, but I hadn't, you know, taken any school or anything on. I was just drawing for fun and dad was i don't even think you started your first book yet it was just like this had just become an idea in itself and uh yeah yeah and so it just organically kind of started taking shape and so i wrote this entire story and you know, not to give away all of it right now, but it's about a girl named Faith and her horse, Kriya, who basically Kriya is a previously wild Mustang and had learned how to meditate with her herd uh, while she was roaming free on the range in Nevada. And so one day Faith comes out and she's kind of like feeling down and Kriya acknowledges this and, and uh, Faith tells her that she had this visit with her doctor who told her that she had a condition called leukemia and Faith uh, was, you know, not feeling great about that. And Kriya said, oh, I I got just the thing. I, I know what might help and taught her how to go into a meditation and mindfulness technique that, and here's where the kind of child's play comes in, into the mix and the, um, it's just a very fun kind of silly story about the two of them blasting off into outer space in this big sombrero spaceship and a sombrero hat that is um, I think it's associated with custom in uh, Mexican or Hispanic heritage about, um, like, if I recall correctly, the it's a hat that's worn in kind of like a courting process, like when when the man's trying to woo the woman, sort of thing. And I, uh, if some of you listeners know like better about this, like shoot us an email or about it because uh, you know I did a little googling, but. Definitely in our area in southern Arizona, where we're currently living, uh, the sombreros, I mean, you'll often see them in Mexican restaurants and stuff like that. And so it, it's a pretty prominent, colorful hat. And I don't know why it came to mind. It was just like uh, my mind just like built a spaceship out of that hat. And I think that goes back to when I was a kid and like I would see them in restaurants or whatever or different displays around town and and they just reminded me of spaceship oh that's just that's great i think that yeah just coming back to this like childlike play and the the script is so beautifully orchestrated in a way that's like you can feel faith's emotion and kriya's assistance and then like the the childlike play that comes from the sombrero spaceship and everything surrounding that journey that faith and kriya take in like a meditative state is just such a powerful profound uh experience and way to way to shift the brain into thinking i think 
Yeah, and I know as we're sitting here looking at each other, you know that like just from your childhood early on, like some of the silliness and goofiness that's written in that story uh, parallels a lot of the stuff that I used to come up with <laughs> playing with you, like with your dollhouse. And oh, yeah, for sure. Other- <laughs> for sure. There's a lot that comes up in that as well. I think you've always had this like sense of, childlike creativity in a way and putting it into this book is like it's really fascinating and I am really grateful for the opportunity to be illustrating it and that we get to share this you know as a group effort and in a way so do our horses and you know it's like it's a family sort of endeavor going into this book. So the illustration is a big one and so for those of you who don't know Alyssa is illustrating the book, uh, all of it. And to me, a children's book is very much about the illustration. I I think it's, I mean, really, it was pretty easy to write the book, but the illustration is what brings it to life, especially for children in mind. And I think the audience for this book is going to be like K through maybe third grade kindergarten through third so i don't know maybe age like five to eight yeah something like that i mean i i suppose we probably should have a defined market or something like that but um that's still kind of in development i suppose but your artistic ability has blossomed just like in the past geez like six months and it's interesting because we wrote this a while ago like has it been two years now i think so at least i think so yeah yeah so we we wrote it a couple years ago and it just kind of got tabled um for all different reasons but now it just seems to be coming about and can you talk about like the medium that you're using and why you chose it. Yeah. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm a very new artist. Uh, I suppose I'd been drawing and like coloring since I was little, little, probably just able to, you know, hold a crayon enough to scribble on a piece of paper. It's always been something that spoke to me, but I never saw myself as an artist and I never like, I never really acknowledged that part of me as being like a good thing for whatever reason. It was just kind of like, oh, a way to get my creativity out on paper. But so I've done a good amount of uh, pencil drawings, primarily pencil drawings. I am not typically one to like dabble in painting or try new things as it relates to art for some reason. It just it's an interesting sort of dynamic. Anyways, this correlates with like painting with my horse willow uh because i did at a point teach her to paint and that's turned into a business and just such a fun way to connect with this beautiful wild horse of that that's my friend now and uh so that is going to be put into part of the illustration with osteolavisa leukemia and i've taken on more of a watercolor medium for the 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 color of it really so it's it's lots of fun to just like i think watercolors have this sort of flowy like personality about it that just speaks childlike nature to me and the way that certain colors will blend in a way that it might be harder to blend in like color pencil or something or even the way that some of the colors fade into the lines or like it just reminds me of drawing and coloring as a child and like having this feeling of it's not perfect, but it needs to be perfect. And in this book, I feel like in a lot of ways, I'm able to speak to those children that feel maybe they're something in their life needs to be more perfect. But even reading this book isn't perfect. The illustration isn't perfect. And it doesn't have to be, in my opinion. It's just fun and a way to connect with 
I believe these children, even before the book is out, and dad and the horses and the muse, if you will. I love that. And the idea that it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, that even that speaks to me directly because the healing process isn't perfect. I mean, we often will like look at healing, whether it be emotionally, physically, spiritually, or otherwise, as, you know, a wand being waved in the, in the sky and poof, automatically you're healed or, or touched by a miraculous healer and all of a sudden you're healed. I think those things can happen and they've been known to happen. But I really think if we peer into the details behind those cases, even there was a lot of leading up to that point and a lot of imperfection before the healing actually occurred and took place. Yeah, for sure. And there's a lot of even like mentioning it now, like in your personal healing journey you just got your blood test results not long ago and on paper you still have cancer and it's like it's coming back stronger but you're still perfect in the way that you're healing so beautifully and no matter those imperfections in the body or on the body or otherwise outside of the body, we're all perfect in our own little ways. It's like we're perfectly imperfect, if that speaks to you in any way. Yeah, I hear that. And I appreciate that insight. I know you and I have talked a lot about the cancer in and of itself. And uh, for many people dare I say for everybody, the, the big C word cancer is like the most scary illness. If not, if not the most, certainly one of the most scariest illnesses. And I just think the healing process and acknowledging it as being imperfect brings out the perfection that you're talking about brings out that that light of divinity that we all embody and gives us the space within our bodies to actually heal and i know there's plenty of people out there who have talked about this very thing you know one of the most recent that i've you know come in contact with not long ago, of course, Anita Morjani and her book, Dying to Be Me, and uh, Tara Coyote, her book, uh, Grace, Grit, and Gratitude, uh, Louise Hay, uh, her book, uh, You Can Heal Your Life. Uh, there's countless others. Uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Becoming Supernatural. Um or becoming superhuman. I always get that mixed up. I don't know if <laughs> which one it is. Supernatural, superhuman. Butchering that there. Uh, but yeah, so this book is, this children's book, Also of Visa Leukemia, is in my way kind of a tribute to all the people, especially children, who are experiencing similar types of illnesses, even leukemia in their lives. And now what I know from leukemia is that it's come a long way over the decades. Um, it's actually quite treatable in most cases, at least to uh, a fairly sustainable remission. Uh, now there's a lot of different types of leukemia, um, but as I understand it, most of it, even from an allopathic medicine perspective, it's pretty good results, at least to get it into remission. And remission meaning that the disease itself isn't progressing or rapidly progressing. I don't know the real technical definition of that. but um, So I see this book appealing to people 
who want to share with their children a fun way to explore not just healing of the body, but of understanding that we're more than just this body and we're more than just this mind. And that we have the ability to make choices even when things aren't going well in our world. And I know at age 42 years old, um, it, it was just not very long ago where I started to realize that in my own life. And regardless of the circumstances that I'm in, I started making the choice to be joyful in the moment and to choose joy and to choose happiness regardless of what I felt internally. And at the time of starting, that was very, very difficult to do. And a lot of pain bubbled up to the surface and a lot of wounds bubbled up to the surface and various aids and tools and techniques uh because i feel like because i was willing to try something uh things started synchronistically popping into my life like uh deeper meditation techniques uh yoga um which is coupled with breathing and meditation and body movements um Things like uh, the horses, most definitely, like being able to connect in with nature and, and through their nature and th through their their spirits. And and then from there, it blossomed. I, was, I, I took a journey myself, just like Faith and Kriya in the book decided to, you know, dive into this from a, a meditative perspective. I... I did as well. I saw myself on a daily basis leaving the confines of my situation behind. And that ultimately manifested in shifting my reality in some pretty amazing ways. I mean, just over a year ago, I had looked up at the stars and said, like, cancer, just take me, wishing and hoping to die. And yet here I am today, just like totally f full of joy. And it's not to say that life is perfect and everything is grand. I mean, we have a lot of things going on, but uh, the true essence of my life now has turned from negativity and despair and wishing to end this life to living it in in the present moment and acknowledging every moment that passes by and the heaviness that was life is now light and airy and it's it's become really fun yeah and that's it's so beautiful it's like exactly what this book touches on too like in no way do you allude to oh if you sit and meditate for x amount of time cancer will leave your body but you do allude to the fact that if you're able to step away from the body and the mind for even a short time, the the results are incredibly amazing, even if cancer still resides in the body, even if there's still, you know, a call it an ailment in the body or the mind that could be preventing a joyful po or yeah it could be preventing a joyful and positive life whereas instead you're leading this narrative into being still joyful and confident and positive even through these ailments and the horses are just such a beautiful like portal and companion to go through this journey on and with. Yeah, I totally feel that. And it's been a really fun experience for you and I to be on uh, together as we 
do our best to navigate this thing we call life and um you know kind of we've had opportunities to do things and kind of we we try to like uh well i guess we can get to kind of what we have going on uh yeah, yeah. um so it's now what are we in almost may of 2024 and in August of 2023, so this past August, I broke up with a, a partner of mine who I thought I would, you know, probably spend the rest of my life with. And um, she and I had purchased 10 acres of land in the southeastern uh, Arizona desert. And this was back in 2019. We we purchased this property together, and there was nothing but grass and dirt on this land. And looking back, and I think we had had a number of these conversations along the along the journey. But since 2019 to now, and looking back, we really had no clue what we were doing, and that's not an entirely negative statement, but it's just such that in the grand scheme of things, we really jumped into a lot, like the proverbial bit off more than I could chew uh, phrase comes to mind. And so we had 10 acres of land. It was nothing but grass and dirt. And we, moved an old RV onto it that we were trying to renovate and that became a failure and we built a Ramada over the RV. Uh, that became a failure. A storm came and destroyed that about a year into it. Um, we since built a house about a thousand square foot Cobb house that is, I would say, maybe 75% finished, 60 to 75%, depending what your definition of finish is. And, I mean, right now, you and I are sitting in this house, and I think it's a beautiful space, even unfinished, and there's a lot of positive energy in it. But the the dream died for me. And along the past five years, uh, I really wore myself out. I was working really hard and diligently on the construction aspect. And I was at battle with cancer and fighting cancer and also fighting my fear of death. Even though I found myself in situations where I wanted to die. I was just really wanting to have some rest and relaxation, I think. Uh even if that meant like the ultimate sacrifice, which is kind of a weird way to put it, but I was so worn out. And You know, we have other episodes where I talk about this story, but long story short, um, you know, a little over a year ago now, I stumbled upon Sadhguru and some of his teachings of yoga and then ventured off to uh, a yoga retreat that he hosts and then uh, he calls it and or his program's called Inner Engineering and wound up going to India for almost two months. And my life just hasn't been the same. And it's not just because of yoga. It's not just because of some guru. It's not just because of the horses. Really what it boils down to is my own willingness to take responsibility for my own life and my own willingness to be open to healing in ways that I may not feel are possible. 
And so we're sitting in this house that we literally built with our hands or, you know, I built with help, of course, but I built this house with my own hands. And because of the breakup, I actually consider it a divorce, even though we weren't legally married. Uh, because of that, we, you know, have, have faced the, uh, necessity to sell the property. And that's bittersweet for me because of course, all the time, energy and money and hours and just everything involved with getting it to the position that it's in now. Uh, a good part of me had to work through the pain and agony of that, of feeling like a failure, which I don't see it like that now, but I definitely had to work through that before getting to this point. Um, and so we're faced with the necessity to relocate. And so it's been really difficult. We had a whole farm and we had a lot of animals and my partner, you know, as she went her own direction, was able to take on a lot of those animals. Um, and recently we rehomed, uh, one of our favorite pups, uh, little ginger and, that was a really difficult decision, but the stars sort of aligned that way. And she's with a fantastic new family. And I think <laughs> it seems like she's happier with them than she was. Yeah, with us. for sure. She seems so happy. I'm so happy that that worked out for her. We miss her, but it's, it and had so, to happen. And so, we have these three horses and some family members have basically asked me like, well, why don't you just rehome the horses? And short answer to that question is because they're a part of my journey and my life and my mission in the world and our family and one yeah, could say it's the same about ginger that we just rehomed but it's more it's more to it with the horses because we'd even noticed a difference in ginger's energy and attitude toward us she was a fantastic dog i mean super sweet love to be around us but her demeanor toward us was different in a way that it was almost like she was telling us I'm not your dog anymore and when she met her people we knew we knew that these were her people that they're gonna take fantastic care of her and that this is where her heart is now and I don't feel like that with the horses I feel like their heart is still with me all three of them and I, I have experienced so much with them and about them that I, I don't think I could separate them if I wanted to. They're so incredibly bonded. They're, they're a family. And dad and I have become a part of their herd. And it's such an honor to have been like literally accepted and welcomed into our small herd of three horses that's now we're like uh, a horse human uh, a horse human pair herd where there's five of us total yeah and i'm i'm definitely on the bottom of that pecking order <laughs> cody has uh yeah even cody's higher on the pecking order than you and that horse is your best friend yeah and so yeah they're part of our family and it's not to say that ginger or any of the other animals were not it's just i i love what you're saying about not getting the 
feeling, the heart feeling that it's time to rehome them. And I, I think it's important to point out that we're open to that energy changing. For sure. But it just, and here's, here's the dilemma that I've been in as a dad with an 18 year old daughter and three horses that I brought onto the property that I own with the thought and understanding within myself that I would die on this property. Like I never intended to relocate ever. Uh, there was a bit of a hermit sort of, uh, idea or ideology with me. Um, whereas now I'm, I'm very much interested in traveling and experiencing the world in ways that I haven't been able to in, in the past. Um, but the horses have become such an integral part of our family. And uh, my answer silently to those who are like, well, why don't you just rehome the horses? Well, one of the big reasons is, is because it takes a long time to rehome, let's say even a dog or a cat, a horse. I mean, especially given the way that we've been with raised and interacted with these horses it would take a very, very special person for me to be able to just like let them drive off, you know, with, with the horse in the trailer, you know? Yeah. And especially because there's a strong desire on our end to keep them together as a herd and to right. say, I'll never forget the look on Cody's face when Grace pulled up here. So we had just moved off of a property that was working on starting a non-profit horse rescue sanctuary thing it turned out to be a really bad situation we got kicked off of the property and we were told that law enforcement was going to come that week and pick up all the horses on that property including ours if we didn't get them off the property and so i that very day that we got the message uh, dad got it in text and then I went and talked to the property owner who had sent that message and that very day I was I was scrambling for a place to go which eventually led me back to the current property where we're at the family property because uh, shortly before that I had not wanted to be here I didn't want to come back it was like you know as a, a point of the past it was but it felt right in that moment. And so, which is a natural course of a divorce or breakup in a family situation. It's like, uh, I think even if the house here was fully completed and like 100% livable and like how we would think of like a normal house, I mean, um, it would be a different flow, but at the same time, like energetically, we're just all wanting to move on. Yeah, it's and not calling to the heart at all. And in that, you know, it, it was a weird sort of moment where it had come up and it, it felt like a nice escape. You know, I could get the RV on the property and get the horses out here where there, I know there's already a paddock for them and you know, it didn't feel like it was going to take much work on my part. Uh, unbeknownst to me, we took... So this this rescue, is, or this property, call it, is a good half hour away from where we live. And so we took three trips uh, for the horses alone. We got Cody in first and then Willow. And then we came back for Grace the following morning. And that was that was a very stressful time for all of us. And... Uh, given the plan was to load Cody up on one trailer and then the mares up on a separate trailer and take them all at the same time. And that just, that didn't work out. It's like, you know, the horse is having to say goodbye to uh, just under 20 other horses that they had deemed their family since we moved there. And uh, it was really difficult for all of us involved. But 
uh, needless to say, everyone got, everyone's here, everyone got here safely, and the look on, the look on Cody's face primarily when Grace got here, Grace is the lead mare of the herd, she's incredibly sweet, very spiritual, she was the... She was the most difficult one to get on the trailer, just given she's gone through a good amount of trauma, and rightfully so. She's a wild Mustang, also from Nevada, like Willow, and getting on a trailer is really hard for her. It took five hours to get her on the trailer, uh, but she didn't get injured, no one got injured, and once she got home, when... When the trailer was right outside the front gate, Cody was talking to her. She was whinnying louder than I'd ever heard her whinny before. And the look on Cody's face when the door opened and Grace, like, kind of poked her head out was like, Cody was like, my mama's here. This is the best day of my life. And he walked up to her and greeted her. He pretty much... He almost like stepped into the trailer where she was to greet her and welcome her back and express his love and joy and gratitude to see her face again. And seeing that was like, I I could not separate these horses if I wanted to. Like they're, they are a family and Grace and Willow have already gotten taken away from one family. Now two, if you want to uh given they did establish a good family where they were and i can't separate them yeah you mean where they were at this uh property so this this rescue property was supposed to be you know a more long term yeah thing for you and the horses and to really kind of help develop that in your own way and it just uh, we're still trying to figure out, like, we don't understand the details of it, but the last we heard is that it was essentially being shut down. Yeah. So, uh, we were given warning to get ourselves, or Alyssa was given warning to get herself and our horses off the property. And that's exactly what she did. And so there's been a lot of like, and this I kind of go in like the spiritual aspect and kind of bring this back into Asta La Vista Leukemia because um, coming back to this property. So I had mentioned I, I went to India back in last October, uh, but just this past February, I went back to India and I was just about to uh, begin undergoing some pretty intensive Ayurvedic therapies for cancer. And uh, I got a message from Alyssa as she was finishing up this move back to our property. And she wound up having an accident that she opened the door of the truck in a full propane tank. You know, the kind that you kind of have like underneath your uh, barbecue grill for a gas grill, a full one of those fell on her big toe and crushed it. Fractured <laughs> so, and dislocated the toe. Yes. Yeah. So she had that. And within days after that, um, I was, you know, on a plane back home. And it might have taken me a little longer than days because... Uh, February 24th, I had some pretty major food poisoning and fever, and I pretty much went comatose for a couple of days. And a uh, complication of that, I developed a blood clot in my leg. So I was unable to travel for some time, and I just barely uh, got medical clearance to travel back home that long flight and uh so we all five of us the three horses and Alyssa and me come back to this property and we're kind of like well we intended to leave here and in fact when i left when we left this property back in february it was actually on the market to be sold and it was under contract in fact so that contract fell through and now we're back on this property and 
I've had to go through a bunch of new found and this for those of you who are into astrology and some of that stuff, I mean, we've had some major astrological events with the um, eclipse, just the planetary positions and um, the full moons and all of that kind of stuff. I'm not an expert on it at all. However, I listen to a good number of experts. Um, um, hi, Denise Byron, if you're listening, thank you so much for all of your insight and wisdom in that way yes for sure thank you <laughs> and and uh it just it seems to make a whole lot of sense and so i've you know been in this purging of sorts since i've been back here and coming to terms with like trying to start a new life elsewhere but being pulled back to this realm and the proverbial big elephant in the room is that we have three horses and I've also got, you know, uh, you, Alyssa, who you're like trying to launch your career and get yourself on solid footing. And yeah, seriously, I do have plans to, uh, hopefully start college in August and, you know, just, just try to, move on a little bit with my life but my passion is with the horses I mean I've been really working with Grace as of the past week on getting her halter trained we've had this mare for over a year now and she has had a halter on before but since she came to us she's been really like fearful of it and it wasn't really it didn't seem to us like a huge deal originally and dad had done a good amount of work with her like months after she came home but a lot of stuff fell through i dislocated my elbow last october uh fractured the foot and uh just a few weeks ago or it's like last month and so working with her has been pretty complicated for me just with my physical state uh but anyways i've been working with her on the halter and just Seeing how she's progressing, you know, so rapidly, it's such a beautiful thing to watch, but it's, it gets, it's like a, it's a lesson, a huge lesson on patience too, and not, not letting myself down because of what I didn't do, because all that exists is this moment right now, not the past, not the future. And so it's a sort of like, teaching lesson on paying attention to how I'm feeling and how she's feeling and knowing that she needs to have her hooves done. She needs her teeth done. They all need, you know, medical care that we're figuring out very, very soon, regardless of if she gets to put a halter on or not. And it's just been, it's been another part of the healing for it's been a, a major part of the healing process for both dad and I and and being here as well. We've gone through so much collectively and individually, just as you were just saying. And the horses have been an incredible integral part of like, you know, helping us helping us get through these challenges in our life, but also in a way where I was going with that was with was working with her has working with her has brought up so much so much insight I suppose in in life and and so much joy and positivity in my life and it's it's shown me like this is where I want to be I want to be helping horses like Grace like Cody who before us and his rescuer we weren't his 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 previous owner had rescued him but before her he was on his deathbed and so he's a rescue Willow is a wild mustang that mare's enjoying her life she, i think she prefers it domestic over wild um but being able to hang out with and 
and enjoy and learn from, but also teach in my own ways to them how to exist. Like that is my calling in life. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's such an amazing process. And as you and I have talked about, it's like, it seems asinine to us for us to rehome three horses just so Alyssa could venture off and go say, work at a rescue or a sanctuary or work with other people's horses. It just doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense, especially with this connection that I have with our three already. Yeah. And so what are you looking for? And I know between you and I and the, it's, I would say it's more of like a, a friendship discussion than a dad and daughter discussion, but we've, we talked a bit about following the heart and, you know, where is your heart? What do you, what would you like to do if you could wave that proverbial magic well, wand? My perfect, I'll mention a bit about my, like, what would be my perfect case scenario and then some steps that I'm like mentally thinking that should happen before I get to said perfect case scenario. Uh, my perfect case scenario is to move and be a roommate with someone who's passionate about yoga, horses, spirituality, all that stuff, and start a program where I'm working with children and horses using yoga and mindfulness techniques where while also expanding Willow Paints and the podcast and constantly meeting new people and having the freedom to meet new people, regardless of if that's, you know, traveling for a few weeks at a time uh, or they come to my property or our property and, you know, meet face to face, that kind of thing. And this seems to, this just keeps coming up in different ways and whatever. But I think that a few steps that need to be taken first is establishing someone who is passionate about this alongside me, someone who desires a business partner in that way to help both of our businesses grow mutually exclusively to one another and allowing both of our skills to hopefully assist in the other's uh, flaws, if you will. And um, yeah, I've been reaching out to a good amount of horse rescues and sanctuaries here in Arizona, California, and a few other states here in the U.S., but that is my perfect case scenario. Yeah. And so as we talked about, I mean, and I've just shared a little bit about, or I've shared a lot about, you know, my life and all the different sort of, I use the analogy of like lily pads across the pond and like how we have so many different like lily pads that we jump to and we're trying to get to the other side but we might have to take different detours and do different things in order to get there. And um, I personally like how like open and receptive you are to that, because a lot of times I think even at your age and not to, you know, put you down because of your age, but it's just like, or I look back on my own life and at that age, I just had like at the time when I was your age, I wanted to fly airplanes for a living and it was just like, that's all I thought about, but not from like the perspective of like the people that are actually successful in doing that. They say like, there's basically like, I did not think about it not happening ever. You know, like I thought about it not happening all the time. Like I'm never going to make it and had all this negative self-talk and all that kind of stuff that I had to go through decades of life to figure out how to work through that. And, and even the disease cancer, you know, has, has been a, a guide in, in that way to illuminate all that negativity and that like feeling of unworthiness and lack of self love. But I find you like in this, 
situation in your life where you're not like what I see from you, you're not looking for somebody to like give you a handout or like, you know, take you to this perfect situation that you desire, but rather you're, you're willing and able to, to work on it and, and do what you need to do to get there. Yeah, exactly. And, and your heart seems tilted more toward helping people and like really like, and that's again, like this whole idea of like, Asla la vista leukemia and the book that you are working passionately on and you've shared it with me a lot of just like the the joy that it's bringing you using your creative artistic ability to ultimately like help children you know just have a glimmer of an idea of about this sort of stuff that you're learning in your life. Is, yeah, for sure. And it's it's such a beautiful, beautiful experience this life is. And in the way that, like, the universe works in miraculous, miraculous ways. And it's oftentimes we could let us, I could let myself go down this rabbit hole of, oh, I'm never going to find a place to be, this, that, and the other thing. But in all reality, I think that I haven't found a place to be yet because everything that I've come across has been in some way, shape or form. Like my heart is like, "Mm, not yet. That's that's not going to help propel you. And I have a few opportunities that are pending, but nothing that's definite yet. So certainly keeping the options open and it's whatever comes of it. That's, you know, I'd love it for someone to be like oh, I'd love help on the property or on the ranch or on the rescue or whatever, and I have room for you and three horses. And I would just love to work and help expand someone else's mission in exchange to live live there and have a space for my horses and on downtime be able to work with my horses to further develop my craft. Yeah. And so you guys listening, just to summarize that, this is kind of a cry for help, but not from like a charity perspective. It's more of like a, like a cry to connect with like-minded individuals. And if you or somebody that you know has an opportunity that would be fitting for Alyssa and our horses, definitely reach out to us and you might be wondering, okay, dad, like, where are you in this picture? And so again, we're not, Alyssa's not necessarily looking for like a paid position or where you take on like the horses and, and provide room and board all the way around. Like, um, you know, I'm, I'm still, you know, in the mix and, uh, supporting, you know, financially and otherwise as, as best as I can, um, for these horses. And, and my goal is to even do more than that, uh, depending where you ultimately end up. So, um, you know, like, let's say for example, that you end up at a rescue or sanctuary. Um, I would love to support that organization financially and even like, uh, be able to come and volunteer from time to time and, and my way of giving back that way as well. And, uh, so where, what I'm planning to do is, uh, I've just had this calling over the past six months or so, at least, um, to really exhaust all of the avenues of what would be called, uh, or termed alternative therapies for, uh, leukemia in particular. And that means like Ayurveda, um, ancient Chinese medicine. I know there's all different types of modalities all throughout the world. And one of my goals, one thing that I would like to do is to travel and, um, take part in, you know, at least a number of those before, uh, resorting the allopathic medicine route. And it's not that I'm against allopathic medicine. It's just, I actually just find it quite fascinating that there are so many, um, 
opportunities out there. And I just am feeling the desire to um, uh, kind of investigate and experience that on my own. And so that's, that's what I plan to do. And the, the big crux of all this is that we have a property, we have horse property that, um, we need to sell. And I would love to say that I'm in a financial position to just like go off and buy like a, you know, an already completed, you know, horse property that Alyssa can stay on and kind of build her craft and business from that perspective. But, uh, that's not in the cards for me at the moment. So we're looking to, uh, partner with somebody or a, a number of somebody's to, not only take care of our horses, but to um, further a mission. Yeah, for sure. That's That sums it up beautifully. And hopefully when I see your face back in the U.S., you won't have cancer anymore. Yeah, and I mean, I, I love what you told me the other day about cancer. It's like, do you have... Do you feel like you, you have cancer? Yeah, do you feel like you have cancer right now in this moment? And my response is like, no, I don't. And your response is, well, you don't. Well, the blood test exist. is in the past. <laughs> yeah. The the blood test that they took at whatever point is now in the past. And like in this moment, uh, I don't have cancer in that way because it's, it's um, and I will say that I could probably go down the rabbit hole of like, bringing cancer back front and center in my life and start having symptoms. And I think that's part of the healing process is acknowledging that until we leave this body, we don't have to be bound to symptoms and negativity. And like, we can actually live a very joyful and exuberant life, regardless if we're feeling good physically or not. And so I've learned that a lot of my symptoms that I was having were amplified because of my choice. And I've made conscious choice to move those symptoms out of my body. And it's like the universe rewards that. And to me, that's miraculous healing in and of itself, regardless of what a blood test shows, because I'm living my life to its fullest right now and if that means my my health deteriorates rapidly uh in the short term you know that's i'll deal with that when and if it comes and uh if it means that you know i fully eradicate or the disease is fully eradicated from my system and a blood test shows that then that would be great too yeah, for sure. There's so much on the way, I feel it. It's just a matter of, like, really getting out of this this property and moving on to the next chapter for all of our lives. Yeah. So to wrap it up, we're just asking for a good amount of help and assistance and, if nothing else, uh, prayers and positive energy and... Um, but really just if if you or somebody you know, uh, if something like that resonates with you, um, feel free to reach out to us, podcast at reinforcethehorse.com. Or you can uh, find us on Facebook at Reinforce the Horse and Instagram as well. Yeah. As always, thank you so much for being here with us, for listening to our life updates and for journey with us yeah we appreciate you 